morning. Hey, good morning, Sean. Good morning, everyone that's watching, or hello, who is watching the recording. And uh, I think we should be good to go. Okay, so this is um, <clears throat> Vance the Lower Diaries number eight. <laughs> um, this session, we're going to walk through a uh, simple time entry, you would say, Sean? Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any wireframes to show before this? Yeah. Diving in. Yeah. Um, let me just make sure you can share your screen. Okay. All right. Get this out of the way here. Okay. All right. So as Johnny mentioned, we're just doing a um, a very simple time entry recording. Um, so the first screen, uh, where it's just a form, and they're selecting a shop order and a task. And then they would click this start task button. Um, when they click that button, as always, we're going to copy from the EX NAB BTN template. And in this case, we're going to pass an action of start. And the reason we're passing an action is because, you know, we're going to reuse this program for, for other, other features within the application. Um, and at the same time, we're also going to prompt the user for an optional note. So when they press start task, we're going to ask them for a note. Um, I put some comments over here. So when they, when they press OK, that's when the RPG program is actually called. Um, so we're going to pull the order number and the task that they entered we'll extract the username and then we're just going to stamp with the current time. So we have a time entry file that has basically these fields, order task user, current timestamp. So that's when they started and then end. That will be null initially because once they end it, then we'll stamp that. We're also going to check for the note parameter. If they added a note, we'll write it out. And then on, in nav, we're going to be, checking for the callback of this RPG program. When it sends back success true, meaning, hey, I wrote the record out, then we're gonna hide the start task form, and then we're gonna show this next screen. And I just wanted to put a note in here, if, you know, for anybody watching <clears throat> this recording you know, afterwards, but in, in, in a, if you're using a valence version greater than 5.2, 20, 20, 5.26, in the back end, you'd be able to just disable and enable the feature and the hide show will happen automatically for you so you wouldn't have to do it in behaviors. Okay, so I press okay and then we get the end task screen. Um, we just show the information basically that they that they uh, chose when it started um, and we have an end task button. So if they click end task, we're going to call that same RPG program passing an action of stop. And all that's going to do is just stamp that same time entry record that we wrote out. So, you know, this isn't a very sophisticated database for this example, but hopefully, you know, you get the point of it. So we're just going to stamp uh, the current time on this end date field. So end task. And then this just takes me back to the beginning. Um, one other thing, we'll have a My Time Entries button here where we could, they could just view all of their time entries. And then the last slide I have here is just, I just wanted to quickly explain in App Builder <clears throat> how we're gonna go about handling this. So this is meant to represent App Builder. We're happy, the, the, app, the application has two forms, the start and the end task. We're gonna give each form a unique feature ID. We're gonna call this Start Task. That's the, that's the name of the feature. And then end task will be the name of the, uh, the end task form. We're going to hook up a start program, copying the EXNAB start template. That's what we always copy from anytime we're specifying a startup program. And we're going to determine at runtime which feature we want to disable because I might start a task and then leave the application and go back in. If I have an active task, the application should start like this, not like this. All right, Johnny, that's all I got. 
Okay, cool. Let's start it up. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. Okay. Can you uh, see my screen just fine? Yep, I see it. Okay, sweet. All right, as Sean stated, we have some tables. Maybe we just go into them real quick. We'll just use file editor. The time entry fields, perfect. We have the notes table. And then we have our tasks, just a subset list of tasks that we allow for. And let's kick off at Builder. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is, I would think we'll start with just getting that data source for the time entries themselves. So let's create that first. And we already have a statement, so we don't have to spend time typing that out. Paste that in. So it's just pulling in the main time entries that we talked about. Our tasks we're pulling in so we can get that task description. And then uh, some customer information because we're going to show that later in that form. And we kind of cheated here. We, we're just reusing our demo yes, order yes. file. It's not really a shop order or a work order per se, but we're just, just using what we already have. Right. right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> We have that, so we want to create that first form. Uh, DD8. Should I just really quickly probably get those other data sources since I'm in here? Tasks. Let's just get those tasks. And that was just tasks. And we're, 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 we have this table, we're using this because we're gonna eventually use that for a drop down so they can pick their, their task. Okay. And then we're gonna need our work order, shop orders. I'm just gonna create that last data source. And that's going against, as Sean stated, we're cheating. We already have a table out there for demo orders. So we're just gonna reuse that table. That task and that orders, you're just creating to use as combos in our start task form basically, right? Right. Okay. So, orders, DD8. Oh, it's already, um, I think that should be good to start off, right? So, and we want to create, I didn't spell that right. Um, so for our time entries, we want to create our first, that first form to start the task. And what do we have? We had the order. It was just the order and the, and the task. The task itself. So no. I could say, and then here's where we're going to make this a drop down to that data source that we just previously created. So the user can not just see it by ID or anything like that and get a list, of course. So we're saying the display field is going to be the description. The value field is the ID and hit save. These are editable. This is our first form. Let's take a look. Order task. We didn't have anything else in that first form, right? Uh, I think that order can be a combo too. 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, let me do that. But since we're here, I don't want this to auto load because it's always going to be empty. We want them to enter. And let me assign that. And then I'm just going to do order number, display, and value. And then maybe we maybe we put a title on here, start new task. Sure. I think that should be it for this one, right? This one's really simple. Okay, <clears throat> and then I can create the, uh, should I create the second form or should I just introduce this for right now? Uh, I would just create it right away. Okay. Why not? And that one again was? So we started with, uh, yeah, we have, order? we have customer name, we have order, mm -hmm. we have task, and then we have the start time. Name is good. Task description. Yeah, the description. Task. And then start. Maybe that start. Well, I guess once we see it, I don't know if we have any data in here to see, but maybe Probably we want to format it. It's going to be an ugly timestamp. Right. Let me just move name up above. Name, order, task started on. Yeah, let's do that. This is a timestamp, right? Yes, timestamp. Okay. We'll do this one. Okay. Um, these are nothing, nothing. can be edible. Nothing. Is that it? I think. Yep, and then just the title. Right. And task. Task. Okay. If I miss something, we can go back and change it. Okay. Um, start with this. Introduce the app. Yeah. Okay, now that we created those two forms, let's create this app. Uh, DD8. First, we want the start task. And then let's add the end task. Okay, right away we want these in the same row, right? No. And then I think we want to manipulate this to make it look somewhat like those wireframes. Yeah, so it doesn't, so on, in the wireframes at least, they, they definitely weren't full height. So we could probably put a fixed height on these and, and then, uh, the width of the screen as well. You know, we kind of, we had it centered. Right, so One. that's where we would hover over a section. And on this gear, we can, we can change that width. Um, 50% maybe, start off with. Sure. And then start task. All right, so probably, what, a fixed height? What do you think? Yeah. I would say um, 300 maybe. Sure. Okay. Because we're going to have a button on that. We are going to have a button. Right. And then maybe that end task is probably bigger because we got a few more fields, maybe 400. Okay. See how it looks. 400. Yeah, and you can see that there's room for the toolbar. So remember, it's the, these are never going to be shown at the same time. We're going to be showing one right. or the other. So the startup program we're going to specify is going to, so I guess that brings us into, remember in those, in those wireframes, we said that we were going to give each of these forms a, a specific feature ID. And the reason we give feature IDs is so we can enable and disable them throughout the application. 
Should we just do that now in the security section then? Yeah. Speaking of features. So we see our widgets and we can add the feature name. Uh, I don't know, start task. Yep, start task and end task. Okay. Should we at least set this startup program? Yep, and, program? and we, already, we already have one. It's um, DD underscore, let me get yeah. it. DD underscore T-E-N for time entry, S-T-R-T -T for start. So DD underscore T-E-N. -T -R -T. That's it, yep. Okay, and then for people watching, they know, you know, you can click on this question mark, which will show you the, the sample program you, you can clone and copy and then start off of. It's a good template. So that this will be called right when your application is starting. Okay, um, I'm gonna give it a title. I don't know, what do we think this title? End time entry. Okay. Well, I know that if we just ran it, we would just see these two widgets, but we'd have that calling program. Um, should we take a look at that RPG program that is current? Yeah, that, that's a good idea. Okay, I'm going to pause right here. I'm just going to stop sharing so you can show that. We'll, what's going to happen when the application launches? Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Indeed. So this is the um, this is the the startup program, and all we did was we copied this and then we filled in the code that we wanted in process. So all we're doing here, first thing is I'm getting the current user. In this case, you know the the API specifies if you want to get the IBM user. You know, you pass the second parameter. So I'm just getting the IBM user. Then I'm going to our time entry file and I'm looking for any record for that user that has an end date of null because that means that they have an active time entry at that point. So if they have an active time entry, I'm going to disable the feature of start task. So that will, that will hide that start task form and it'll take us immediately because remember we're, we're, we have two forms in the beginning. So only the end task one is going to be shown. Um, I forget, did you call it end task? Uh, let me tell you right now. Can you change it to stop task? Yep. Okay, if you did. Um, otherwise, they do not have an active time entry. We're gonna disable the stop task feature, which will hide that, that other form that is to, you know, to stop a task. Perfect. So I'm going to stop my screen sharing here. Okay. So then since we have that program and it's compiled already, I'm assuming we can just probably save it and just see what we, what, how the app behaves as of right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we, we don't have an active entry, so we should just see that start new task when we start, when we launch up. Right. If everything's working right. Time entry. Da, da, da. Okay, let's take the defaults. Okay. Launch that. Okay, so we see the start new task only, even though in app builder in our app itself we have two widgets start and end task i wonder if we also put a i don't know if we if we adjust the main to be even smaller or do we just put a fixed width on this thing too maybe just a fixed width okay because it's still it looks a little big yep okay so i'm back in here uh, what do we think for the width? Uh, I don't know. 200? 300? I don't know. 300. That's good. And then maybe the same thing on the other one. Yeah. 
This one's going to have customer name. Is it still going to be enough? Should be enough. We'll be able to tell later. Okay. So now that that app is at least showing our own one widget because we haven't, I'm logged in as uh, major. I think my, I, my account is, um, I have no records in that, in that file that have a, um, an entry, let alone an entry with a, a null end date. So that's why it's showing just this one widget widget. So should we wire up? Let's get it so we can start a task. Yes. Okay. And to do that, we need to, we need to add a button to this. So we're going to go to behaviors and the start new task. We're just going to click this plus button, add a button and start. Let's get a icon. Play maybe. And this will be the primary. And then we want to disable this. I didn't change. I have to go back to that form and set that. But if the form's in, enabled, we don't we or in error. We want to disable this button, and we want to force that those two fields are required. I didn't do that. All we're all, all our our goal there is just to prevent the user from being able to hit that start button if they didn't fill out both combos. Right. Okay, so now that we have the on click, what are we going to do? We're going to call our RPG program. What is that RPG program? All right, DD underscore T entry. And again, for people viewing, you can always see the template by clicking the question mark and we will bring that up. And that's something you can copy from. We have base templates. And we did say in the wireframe that we were going to we were going to ask for notes, right? Before, yeah, but before you do that too, though, um, let's specify an action. So that, so that we're going to, because the only reason, the only time we'd be specifying an action is if we're going to use this same application, the same program for multiple purposes. And in this case we are, we're going to use it to start the task and we're also going to use it to stop the task. So in this case, I'm looking for an action called start. And kind of a rule of thumb too is anytime actions, it's it's good to be consistent. Tip very typical is camel case notation. Um, you know, so like if it was start task, then he would capitalize the T. Right. And then here before calling this RPG program, once the user does click the start button, we want to ask for more information. And that information is we're just going to ask for a note if they and it's optional. So note, uh, parameter, are you looking for note? Yeah. Okay. And then here the type, um, we're going to make it a text area and it's not required. And the length, um, 250. How about a title too? Maybe enter yeah. option. Note. Is that length right, Sean? That's right. Yeah. Okay, and you could keep on adding many fields, you know, um, what other additional information that you might want or a file upload, etc. here. Okay, I'm going to save that. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> All right, now. So, yeah, so, so when, when that's called, if I, if I add the record, because basically you're, you're asking me at this point to add a new time entry record. Right. Um, I'll send back success equals true when, it, when, it, when it's completed. So we can, we can do further actions once the RPG program returns back, success equals true. And in this scenario, I want to uh, first hide show, and I want to hide the current start new task, and I want to now show end, ta end new task, which I don't like that name. Um, and then I'm also going to want to filter. Do I need to filter that? I, I need to filter that data. Right? Oh, sorry, I was on mute there. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We're going to also 
So we're, we're showing that, that end task and we also want to filter it. And all we're going to do is just, we just need to filter it by the current user. Okay. And then now we get have an app variable for that. And that's user ID? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm storing the IBMI ID. So okay, so nav user ID. Okay, so that is... No, no, I think nav IBMI. Oh, okay. And then I'm going to go to user. Right? I think that's it. Okay. All right. Probably at this point. Let's see if it works, huh? Yeah. Should we show what your what that back end program is doing though that we're gonna call now? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I'm gonna stop sharing right now and you can switch over. Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So we copied from the EX nav BTN template and all of our code is just within this process procedure. Um, so what we're doing here is remember the user used the dropdown of the order and the task where we're just pulling in our, what order number and what's the task getting the current user. And here's where we're checking specifically for that start action. Okay. And uh, the really quick, Sean, that get form num, like those are built in helpers. These are all built in template. helpers, yep, okay. into the, to this nav button. That, you know, that's, that's, this is the advantage of, you know, why would I copy a template program in order to do this? Because there's all sorts of procedures in here to help you interact with the, the front end. Excellent. Um, so now we're just creating the time entry record. Um, this is, you know, this is the unique ID, the user, the order, the task ID. This is the, uh, start timestamp, which, you know, if we looked at the, uh, DDL, it, it would show that we're just defaulting it to the current timestamp. And then this is the end timestamp and this defaults to null. Okay, and this defaults to current. So we're just creating a record. Then, remember in our, the beginning of our startup program, you know, we may have disabled the stop or the start task feature. All I'm doing here is just, I'm just ensuring that the stop task feature is enabled. Because otherwise, if the front end tries to show it, and the, the feature is disabled, it won't show. The feature will take precedence and say, sorry, you can't show it, the, the, it's, it's a disabled feature. So I'm just ensuring that that's, that's enabled. And then I'm just checking for the note. If you, if you happen to pass me a note, I'm just gonna write out to that notes database, and that's it. Then at the end, success true, and then the front end takes it from there. So I'll. I'll stop, uh, stop sharing my screen here. Go back to you. Okay, there we go. Let me share my screen. All right, you can see my screen? Yeah. Okay, so we've added that start button. Um, so I think at that point, let's just save that. And before we go and test this out, I'd like to go jump to that form and put those uh, two fields as required. We did not do that. So I'm just going to formatting and there's a required checkbox. It's just saying they must enter something before they can kick off the action of a primary button on that form. Okay. Let's switch the time entry. I'm just gonna reload the frame from here. It's just a quicker way. Okay, so we have our order dropdown, task dropdown. I'm just gonna select this order task. I'll just do machine setup. So I have nothing and I'm gonna start it. 
here's that optional note that came up before because we, 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 we told it to say that we wanted to ask for more information, which is not mandatory. So I could hit okay here and not in our note, or I could, you know, in our note. So hit okay. And there we go. So now we see the end task and we see the information that we just did. Now we have no buttons. We did nothing to this. So I'm kind of just now stuck here and I can't stop this task. It'd be interesting to restart the application now and it should take us straight here because that yeah. startup program should now recognize that there's an active task right. and hide the start task. Yeah, so as you remember, when we started up previously, it was always showing the start new task. We're expecting not to see that. We're expecting to see the stop task or end task. Sweet. All right, I think we should wire up to get a way to stop this thing, right? Based on the wireframes, there was a stop button, just like our start. Yep. I think. So let me switch to that. And we're gonna go to behaviors, just like before, and on end task, let's just add our stop. Up uh, as primary, uh, we don't need to worry about the form because it's not entry. Uh, okay, and this is going to be similar. We're going to want to call an RP call our RPG program, but beforehand, did we say that we're going to ask for an optional note here too? Ask for what? An optional note? No. No. Okay. So DD what? underscore T entry. DD underscore T entry. Yep. And then action of stop. Stop. Okay. And no, we're not asking for any other information. So I can just hit save at this point. Right. Same thing. The, the back end will, res will respond with a success true when it's completed. And on that success, I want to then go back and show the start task because I might want to start another task right away. And I definitely want to hide. <coughs> <coughs> and did I keep data here? I want to reset clear all fields. I forgot yeah. to because when we go back to that form, they previously placed, you know, they, they chose like they could have started the app, had no, no task started. I start a task, so I've entered an or work order, shop order number, a task, then I move to the end task, then I eventually end it. When I go back and show that starting of tasks, I want to reset, clear all the fields so they're empty, so they can just do another one if they want. If I didn't do this, it would have the old values. I think that should be it. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. All right, let's go back to this. Reload the app. Okay, so we see this end task now, and now we have that stop. I'm gonna um, hit the stop, and now I've gone back to that new task form. This Can might we be show what what happens when you click end. I didn't show that. Yeah, yet. I'm gonna stop sharing and do that. Okay, so we're we're back to that same thing we were just in. Remember, there was the action of start. Well, down here I have an else statement, just assuming it must be an action of stop. I and mean, in this case, we're just getting the current time and we're updating that same time entry field. We're just setting the end date now. And then we're setting the response info. That's why we get that little uh, pop-up that just gives a little message, time entry has been stopped. And then I'm just being sure that that start task feature is enabled. And that's it. Right, and that I guess to point out that the reason you're 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 setting that start task to be enabled is because if I start a task, close the app, then came back, I'd see the stop task, but the start would be disabled. So once they've stopped right. it, you want to make sure it's enabled. Yeah, the same reason I'm doing it here too. It's just the opposite. So 
you know, and, and like we mentioned too, if, if you're watching this video later and you've got a later version of Valence later than this, um, you wouldn't even need to deal with the hide show on the success true. You could just do set response, enable features, you know, stop task, and then set response, disable feature, start task, or, you know, opposite, and it would do the hide show for you. Okay, cool. All right. <clears throat> And you can see now we're seeing that it's required so it knows that I don't have a value, right? So it's marking that up and I can't hit the start with that. Okay, what was the, what was next on that wire? Well, frame? we need a way to view our time entries. That's right, okay. So I'm gonna go back to App Builder. And here I think we're gonna have to create a new data source for that yeah because remember that so that that first data source that 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 was created time entries really that's only looking for really that we should probably call that you know active time entry because right. it's looking specifically for the user that has an end date of null which means it's an active time entry at that point Okay. And here we're just doing the same thing. We're just bringing in the task. So we can get the task description. And we see that one entry. I'm trying to think. That's the same name I used or not? No. Okay. All right. And for this one, we're going to just create a, for right now, just a simple grid just to list out those entries. I think that's what the wireframe said. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was, it's just a grid with the, the order number, the task, and the start and the end date. The order number, order task that's the task task description task description task and then start and then end and then these we want to format too because those are just timestamps right yeah let me just go do that be consistent and put the same one I did here. So we're just putting the formatting so it's friendly to the user when it's displayed in the grid. And I'm going to bring this up a bit. What are we looking like here? Okay. Anything else you can think of? Um, I might clean up that with flex because I'm sure that I'm sure when it's in a smaller window. Small window. Dates are going to be see order order ID I don't know 100 maybe there you go 110 description just switch this to a flux of one this let's say 200 is it 200 look like sure perfect um, and then I think we probably don't need paging. And then it might be helpful to group by order number. That way they can see all of their, uh, all the activities they've done against a particular order together. Yep. So that's where we go to data and that's the group right here. And then group by order. Oh, we just see one. Um, okay. That should be it. I mean, you could throw a search in there if you wanted to, but I'll just leave it like this for now. I think that's it. Should be yep, good. That's it. Uh, so for this, we just had a button that was titled My Time Entries. They clicked it, it popped up a window. That was it. Up. Okay.
And that I'm assuming would be at, we're, we did that at the header, right? So we, yep. So we first introduced this available. new, what was that? It was always available. Okay. Yep. Let's introduce that new widget we just created. As a pop-up, so I'm gonna hover over and get that add as pop-up. So maybe my time entries for the title. Yeah. That width looks pretty good as it is. It does, so. not that bad. I might leave it for now. Mm. Okay. And now we need to be able to, uh, a way to show that thing. So I'm gonna go to behaviors and we're gonna add that to the application itself. So it's always up on top. And in this case, whether Johnny added it to the application or to the main section, it would behave exactly the same way because we only have one section. But if, if what, what Johnny's doing here is, is, is better because if we were to introduce another section down the road and we always wanted that this button to show, then we'd have to change it and put it at the application level because the application level will always be there. Yeah, good point. Now, what are we gonna call this thing? Uh, my time entries. And then do we have a, uh, what we could do for a, an icon? Eh. I don't know. <laughs> we'll leave it. Yeah, I don't know, maybe clock or something. <laughs> sure. Where am I installing here? Someone just asked if, if, if we're gonna be able to show the notes too. Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll attach a button to show the notes and the notes will be specific to that end task form. So for this, we should, um, I've introduced it when they click that. I need to be able to filter this widget. I think you could just, I think you could just slip, simply show it in this case because your data source your data source was checking for the cloud oh, user. Sweet. Oh, perfect. Awesome. Excellent. Show. There you go. Okay. Just save that. Now maybe we just run through a few start and ends. Yeah, just to get some entries in. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna sure start. Um, I won't put a note there. I'll give it a couple seconds. I just hit stop. Note in there. Hit stop. Maybe one with the same order too, so we can see a group. Uh, stop. All right, that sh should be good to get something going. Sweet. We'll start on and on in our different orders. So if you were to do this when you start a task, and you, you know, you would see your active session or your active entry in there too, I would think. We should. So I've started it on six machine setup. There it is, machine setup. And I see that's blank, perfect. I think last thing was just adding the, the button to view the notes. Okay. We have time here. Let's see. That, yeah, yeah. We have time. Oh, we have good. We have time. Okay. Here we're gonna have to introduce the notes, and I do have the sequel for that already. Okay. So we need a new data source that will pull our notes. And here we're just pulling in from that file notes, but then also bringing in the task description because we'll need that. And then also that note date is in descending order.
So because notes are keyed by order number, because the you know, notes are specific to an order, right. we, we wouldn't show those notes you know, until you were in an active task, right? Right. But we need to, what, we'll just have a oh, grid, you know. grid with it. Um, and I know that we want to probably do is, okay, note. Um, just make that blank for now. Um, and then what we probably want. Just user, tab, or order, or no, we don't want order because it's specific to an order. So maybe just right. user and time, right? No date, yeah. Uh, let's see what we're looking at here. This we're probably going to want to change the username. Uh, one time. Yeah, I did two on the last one. And then this we're going to want to do that same render, be consistent. It's a timestamp. Okay. Uh, we also want, and I have this as a side note, I'm just going to copy it, but those notes could get long and we want to make sure it wraps in the grid. So based on whatever it's seeing, it would just wrap. If this, if, the, if your grid cell is, you know, let's say it was 400, but you have lots of text in your note, you want it to wrap. So we can easily do that with uh, in custom formatting. And I'm just gonna, we already have this. So it's just returning a it's HTML markup. This is a div. And the main piece is this style is white space normal. So it forces it to wrap. And we can put a note in that's large if we wanted. Um, I'm just going to turn off paging for now. Uh, sure, search. Um, that should be it. All right, let's introduce that new widget. And that was on the end task, we had the notes button, right? That's right. End task. Primary, um, I'll leave it for just saying notes. I do know that I want Notes first. So this is just the order from left to right, the buttons, and I want notes to be first, stop to be at the end of the right. And then on this, we're gonna, oh, I didn't introduce that widget yet, damn it. Hold on. All right, I forgot to add that widget, my bad. And this was something similar where we had it. Oh man. That's well, at least the wireframes, it was a pop up. Oh, we said it was a pop up. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Let's pop up. Maybe we'll set the title when the way yeah. because it's specific to the order. Right. Okay, let me just do this again. Comment button. Then we'll move it on top. And this we want to filter widget, which is the notes. And I want to go order to order and as you said um, uh, notes so that should put the id on there notes and stop cool Back to the app. Uh, 
Okay, we have that new notes button. Click the notes. We see just the one note for this order, which is ending in six. We um, don't have time to, you know, but you know, if you wanted to add notes, we'd put an add button there and then we'd, right. have, we'd probably just reuse that same program and pass an action of add note and then just write out to the, to the notes file. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that was it that we had, right? Because of special time for adding notes and stuff, we won't make it, so. One last thing, if we wanted to, or if, you know, if this is total preference, like, you know, you might, just to try and introduce a little, make us because the screen looks so plain, I might, you know, set a theme and maybe yep. introduce thicker borders there just to kind of focus that form a bit more. Let's do that. Maybe our, yeah, our blue looks good. And, and we could, you know, change our border width to maybe like four or something and radius too. I'll give it a little bit. Sure. Of... There we go. Okay. Just might make it a little easier to look at or at least add something because it's there's yeah. not much. Plain, yeah. Yeah. That should be good. Yeah. Reload that. Okay. Fix that. Okay. So yeah, that's uh, switch machine. Same thing. Start. Okay. So that adds a little bit to it because it was really plain because there's not much to this thing with just having two forms sitting out there. And you can see that theme, it comes down all the way to your pop-ups and everything. So we see that blue. All right. Well, I think that's that, that's pretty much it that we whipped through that pretty good. Is there If there's any questions right now since we're live, feel free to hit us in the chat right now. Um, if you're watching this on the recorded on our YouTube channel, you can always send uh, any questions to support at cnxcorp.com. And as always, we will have those recordings on our YouTube channel. And you can find out from our main page, the calendar, which will have the links directly to those recordings and the upcoming ones. All right, well, I don't see any questions in the chat. So I think that's, that's it, Sean, unless you have anything. No, I was just waiting for someone to come in. We don't have anything, so. All right. All right, All right. well, thanks everybody that's on. And have a good rest of your weekend, or have a good weekend period. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.